Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention? I want to welcome you to this Startup America launch event, an extraordinarily important initiative to celebrate entrepreneurship and to inspire those future entrepreneurs that will be the future of our economy. Let's get straight to the program without much further ado. I'd like to introduce to you a very special young woman who exemplifies the entrepreneurial spirit and the success that our government and private sector partners here today would like to encourage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Zoe Damasella. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe Damasella. Thank you all for attending. Um, it's so exciting for me to be here. Um, I'm 18 years old, and I'm an entrepreneur. But I, I didn't start out that way. Um, I actually grew up in, in kind of challenging circumstances. Um, my mom was a single mother. I lived um, in low-income housing for most of my life, and I was homeless for a lot of my life as well. And so um, everything was kind of a struggle. But I never really thought that my life would get any better. I didn't think that there was anything else out there for me. And then when I was 14, I discovered this passion that I had for, for entrepreneurship and for business. I started um, my business called Zoe Damasella Apparel. Basically what I do is I make custom-made clothing for women and girls um, of all ages. And I think this really, um, it was something that I enjoyed. It was something that I loved doing. I loved making clothes. I loved interacting with my customers. But of course, being 14 years old and you know, just going to a regular Chicago public high school, I had no idea how to run my business. I was completely lost. I sold my first dress for like $13. It was probably worth like $250. <laughs> but um, I, I, I just did it because I loved it. But then when I was 16, I, I took a class that was offered at my high school. Um, from the, the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, which is also known as NIFTY. And they completely changed my life. I can't emphasize how much, how much support they, they gave me. NIFTY taught me how to make a business plan, how to market my product, how to price my product, which is the most important thing for me. And they also provided me with amazing um, opportunities and mentors like um, Larry Levy and Deborah Quazzo. Um, I competed in, in business plan competitions with them that allowed me to feel more confident about my business as well as, you know, getting some experience speaking with, about it. And there was also amazing prize money that I was able to reinvest back into my business. Um, but it, the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship had such a big impact on my life, and they allowed me to have that kind of financial independence that I didn't have growing up. Um, so that led me to such amazing, amazing things and places. Um, I was featured on um, national and international news, on Crane's Business, um, Oprah's Angel Network, The Tyra Banks Show, um, and then that was just the beginning for me. Um, I got a call from Nifty saying that President Obama had invited um, myself as along with two other winners to the White House, to the Oval Office, to speak with him, and that was just absolutely incredible. I mean, who would have thought that me liking clothes and making dresses would one day lead me to, into the Oval Office? And um, I just, I love the fact that um, he was so interested and passionate about helping young entrepreneurs and, and changing people's lives. I mean, I can't tell you how much my own life has been changed. By the time I was, you know, a senior in high school, I was running my business. I had three employees. I had an intern before I even went to like my senior prom. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's just been really, really amazing. And, and watching the State of the Union address has just, um, I think, really reinforced for me um, just how important of an investment um, entrepreneurship education and support of young entrepreneurs really is. Because not only did it allow me to have that financial independence and, and bring myself out of poverty, but it also helped me to create jobs for my community. And I think it was just, um, it, it's so important to, to you know, really focus on this untapped resource of these young people that have such amazing ideas. Because I have my story, but I know so many other young people, especially with Nifty, who have such amazing, amazing ideas and amazing plans. And I just, I can't help but imagine what it would be like if all kids had access to these kind of resources, if all entrepreneurs had the resources that they need, you know, how much different our world would be. 
it's just, it's amazing. It's a, just an amazing um, experience. So I just want to thank you all for, for being here and just stress how important this is. Um, so now I'm a freshman at Northwestern University. I'm there on a full ride scholarship and um, I continue to, to run my business out of my dorm room. <laughs> um, but um, it's, it's just been amazing. So thank you all so much for coming. And um, I would like to introduce Austin Goolsby, Chairman of the, the Council of Economic Advisors. Thank you, Zoe. And uh, I, Zoe and I are here to represent for Chicago, and I'm, we're, we're happy she's here. I'm uh, the head of the CEA, and I just want to give a very brief overview, and, and then we're going to lay out the details of, of the Startup America program. I think the place as an economist that you start when you think about entrepreneurship and innovation is if you just go get the Fortune 500 list, it's quite clear that some of the biggest employers in the nation, some of the fastest growing companies that employ tens or even hundreds of thousands of people, started in somebody's garage as just an idea that they had, and, uh, and they went from there. And whether you look at innovation itself and new ideas, if you look at employment, if you look at the growth that gives people careers and, and puts money in their pocket, all of those things are tied to, to entrepreneurial ventures in a quite fundamental and direct way. And the research shows that, but you don't need PhD research to tell you that. You just look out the window and you know when, when you see the millions of people starting businesses around this country um, that, that, that that is the case. The new firms in the economy have a way disproportionate share of driving job creation. Uh, as you might imagine. And the president and the administration overall have tried very much to help small business and new startups get through what was the worst recession since 1929. We've cut taxes for small businesses 17 times, the Small Business Jobs Act, some of the things that, that you're going to hear today. But I think that the, the basic idea that we must address access to capital Commercial, commercialization of federal research that, that might take place in the national labs, which historically have been big uh, job creators, startup creators, and, and, uh, and innovation drivers. The helping foster the building of an entrepreneurial culture. You may have seen the rest of the world has not sat back and done nothing. They've observed what a great engine entrepreneurship is. And so they have, in many countries, announced from, dictated from the top, we're going to build a Silicon Valley right here. We're going to start a brand new city, and we're going to make it a Silicon Valley. And thus far, it hasn't worked. They haven't, made, they haven't been able to make those Silicon Valleys because mentorship, learning the culture of being an entrepreneur and having that, uh, that spirit proves to be um, somewhat rare and, and somewhat special. I taught at, uh, at a business school in Chicago. And there was a student who was there from Europe and, uh, and had moved to the United States. And the other students asked, uh, why had he done that? Why didn't he go back to his home country? To Why was he going to business school in the US? And did he want to stay there? And he said, well, where he's from, if you had an idea, and you told people, I'm thinking of starting a company to do this, everybody would have 10 reasons why you shouldn't. That'd be a big mistake. You might not succeed. If you fail, nobody will give you a job again. You'll be humiliated. There's no way that that will work. And he said when he got to America, it was the exact opposite. Every person he talked to, he'd say, here's my idea. They'd say, that's a great idea. And I know a guy you can talk to. He might want to invest in that idea. And that spirit is why, even at large companies, you see a big focus on entrepreneurship, that they want to bring in new ideas from small firms, that they want to be more entrepreneurial in those big companies, because ultimately, it's the creation of new ideas that keep America the premier economy in the world. And it's the reason Startup America is so exciting. 
And basically, as I say, we want to do Start of America because everybody deserves at least one chance to change the world. And with that, I'd like to introduce the National Economic Advisor, the leader of all of us, Mr. Gene Sperling. And not from Chicago. Um, Michigan. Um, well, I'm very happy to be here for the launch of uh, Startup uh, America. Uh, the President put out a statement uh, today on this, uh, which kind of reflects the spirit you just heard from Zoe, which is, quote, Startup America is a national campaign to win the future by knocking down barriers in the path of men and women in every corner of this country, hoping to take a chance, follow a dream, and start a business. Um, this is, a, uh, this is very much a top priority and has been a top priority for, for this president from the start. I was very proud, uh, myself, Secretary Geithner, to partner with Karen Mills in pushing through the Small Business Jobs uh, Act, which was a uh, uh, you know, strong measure both on the lending side uh, and on the tax incentive side. Uh, and we know that that is just the start of what we have to do, what we have to build on. And what we see today is also a real understanding of the public-private partnership. We are announcing policy measures, but we are also seeing today the private sector coming to join us. Even today at the start, there's over $400 million of private sector commitments being made. And as you'll see, these things are linked together. The more we are uh, tearing down barriers, creating tax incentives, making lending and financing more possible for people with the good ideas, uh, the more uh, you get the momentum uh, uh, from having both a public and private and nonprofit sector all pulling uh, in the same direction. Um, I want to uh, make very clear how grateful the President is that Steve Case has agreed to chair uh, this effort. Um, Steve is, uh, uh, everybody knows he's the co-founder of uh, AOL, uh, but many of us have also had a chance uh, in different lives, in different capacities to work with not just him, but his wife, Jean, uh, on the Case Foundation. And um, when S Steve just spoke with the president uh, in the Oval, and uh, you know what Steve said was, you know, whether he's doing private sector or uh, public-private par public partnership, like this to him, it's all the same. It's about investing in people who uh, can change the world. Um, and so we're very, very happy he's agreed to take this leadership role. Uh, another person who has uh, agreed to help co-lead this effort is, is Carl Schramm. And uh, anybody who's worked on entrepreneurship knows the Kauffman Foundation. Uh, they are just front and center at every step. You can't work on this. You can't do a speech on this without looking at what they've produced. And, uh, um, uh, and so we're uh, incredibly happy to have uh, them with us. And uh, you know, many of us, uh, of us have also worked with Bob Lighton, who is one of the, the key people who works with Carl at Kaufman um, Foundation. Um, and I, 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 you know, just make a couple of, uh, uh, of points while we're talking about the Kaufman Foundation, which is this is the exact right time to have a Startup uh, uh, America initiative. Because one thing we know, Austin will know, uh, from what we see happens coming out of recessions, what, uh, what the Kaufman Foundation has shown is that this is the time when people merge together and create new ideas. One of their statistics, and I'm sorry, Carl, if I'm stealing this from your remarks, but uh, more than half of the companies in the for Fortune 500 uh, uh, in 09 started during a recession or bear market. This is the time. Uh, it, is, it is these times when people come together and take a chance. And as, as, uh, um, as Austin said, it, this is really part of our spirit. This, it, there is a dignity in having a chance to be your own boss, run your own business, and to have a culture where uh, failing is not uh, the end of your career, it's just another step to your success. That is the entrepreneurial spirit that this president very much uh, uh, wants, to, um, uh, wants to promote. Um, you know, on the policy front, I'll just mention a couple of things quickly that are coming out more on the, on the tax cut side. One of the things this president committed in the campaign was that for key investments, long-term investments in small businesses, there'd be zero capital gains. We were successful in passing that in the Recovery Act. Uh, we are 
successful in extending that for uh, um, a year uh, in the legislation that happened towards the end of 09. Uh, in our budget that will be announced is to make that permanent so people understand this is a permanent part of our tax code. We also will be calling for reforms to the new market tax credit to make sure those investments are working not just for important critical real estate uh, investment in lower income areas but for small business formation as well and we'll be proposing to expand the uh, new markets tax credit from uh, uh, three and a half, allowing three and a half million billion a year to five billion a year. So these are the types of proposals and policy proposals we'll be doing that we hope will work hand in glove uh, with the private sector, nonprofit sector who'll be working with us. And I want to just make clear, this is a launch. This ain't going away. We're going to come back. We're going to show what we're doing. Uh, uh, we're very, very committed to working with Steve and Carl and so many of the other uh, uh, companies that have decided to be part of this to show some r real results, uh, real job creation, uh, real startups making a difference. So with that, I would like to now introduce uh, someone I first knew uh, when he was the governor of a state that was neither Illinois or Michigan, Washington, <laughs> and is now uh, our very excellent Secretary of Commerce, Gary Lott. Thank you. Well, thanks, Gene. Uh, thanks for those remarks. And, you know, there are a lot of explanations for why America experienced the slowest job growth uh, in the last decade of any period since World War II. And I think really one of the fundamental reasons is that America really lost sight of its economic strength, uh, which is innovation, technology, scientific progress, and the whole notion of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs taking risk uh, in pursuit of a great idea, entrepreneurs like Zoe that we heard from uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, the Startup America initiative is all about reconnecting with that great American tradition. And I'd like to just mention a few measures that the Commerce Department is undertaking as part of that Startup America uh, effort. First, we're building on the success of last year's I-6 Challenge, an innovative program where the Department of Commerce came up with $6 million, which was then matched by uh, NIH and the National Science Foundation to put together a $12 million competitive grant program that rewarded teams all across the country uh, who are taking cutting edge research out of the labs and getting it into the hands of entrepreneurs who can turn that research into new businesses and, and new jobs. This year, we're actually repeating and proposing to repeat the I-6 challenge, uh, $6 million from the Department of Commerce and to be matched uh, by other federal agencies, including uh, the Department of Energy and others uh, it'll, hopefully it will be a $12 million program again, but this time with a focus on communities with novel strategies to spur the development of clean energy related industries within their regions. The I-6 challenge represents uh, President Obama's approach to spurring economic growth. And that is we're helping local communities identify their own strengths, their own assets, and providing the resources that will help them build on those strengths uh, and those assets. It's exactly the same thing that the Commerce Department's Economic Development Administration has been doing uh, to help cities and towns all across America by funding, for instance, regional innovation clusters. Really, again, building on the strengths and the assets of particular communities. Uh, in fact, uh, our Economic Development Administration was recently part of a multi-agency effort that awarded $129 million to cultivate an innovation cluster uh, in the, uh, centered around Philadelphia's Navy Yard uh, on the design and development of energy efficient buildings. And you're gonna see a lot more grants like that uh, focusing on innovation clusters uh, in the year 2011. Another thing that we're really focusing on in terms of commercialization and entrepreneurship is uh, overhauling the patent process within the Department of Patent and, and Trademark, which is part of the Commerce uh, Department. Uh, we have an unacceptably long time frame, almost three years, to get a yes or no on a patent. That is absolutely unacceptable. You know, for a, a major company, patent pending might cut it. But if you're an entrepreneur, a, 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 an innovator, an inventor working out of your own garage or your own basement, you can't get funding. Uh, to commercialize a great idea unless you have title and can show those investors that you have title to that, uh, to that idea. And that's why we are on a mission 
at the Department of Commerce to dramatically lower the current three-year processing time on a patent application. Uh, in fact, we're now also proposing a flexible process for approving patents, one that would respond to the needs of individual innovators and to the marketplace. And under this new system, while we're still trying to uh, dramatically lower the overall time to process a patent, we're coming up and proposing an accelerated examination, what we call a, a, a multi-tiered approach. And ch under track one, uh, we'll be able to give patents out within 12 months uh, for those who pay a slightly higher fee. Under this new system, a uh, technology entrepreneur with a product that's ready to go to market who needs VC funding will be able to get his or her patent within 12 months. Whereas an entrepreneur who needs a, a, has a more embryonic idea and needs time and wants to save fees can actually opt for a slower path uh, or track three. Uh, overall, this new system will bring the most valuable patents as determined by inventors to market faster and will help meet the needs of our, the business needs of our innovators. So it's clear uh, that we can't be content on what we've always done in the face of global competition that's tougher than ever before. Not if we want to compete, and not if we want to win in the future. And the Kauffman Foundation, we're always uh, talking about the Kauffman Foundation, estimates that the most important contributor to a nation's economic growth is the number of startups that will grow to a billion dollars of revenue within 20 years. And to maintain America's historic average growth rate, we need 100 companies like that every single year. So what we're all doing here in the federal government, but particularly in the private sector, and I know that there are a lot of initiatives that are being led by uh, many of our innovators and our companies, for-profit and non-profit, uh, and uh, we're going to need all of us working together to really get us back uh, to what the president calls uh, a society of innovation, of technical prowess, of engineering, of breakthroughs. So thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, one of the stars of, of the administration, uh, Secretary of Energy, Stephen Chu. Thank you, Gary. Um, around the world, countries are moving very aggressively uh, to lead in the clean energy innovation and the jobs they create. Uh, these countries realize that in the future years, uh, the world will demand these products. And the President said in the State of the Union that this is our generation's Sputnik moment. By that, he means that this is a challenge that we uh, have to rise to, that the United States can't take our technological leadership for granted, and we are in a race to develop the clean energy technologies, as I said, which uh, the entire world will need. So how can we respond? Well, the good news is that America leads the world in pure, raw innovation. We have the best re research universities and research institutions, and I might add uh, an outstanding set of national laboratories. We also have the most creative entrepreneurs. And I encourage the entrepreneurs and the businesses, the larger businesses, to reach out to the universities and national labs and grow stronger ties. Uh, this is how we're going to help rev up the great American innovation machine, uh, by taking the raw genius we have and the entrepreneurial spirit we can out-innovate any country in the world. So we need, in order to do this, we actually need to get our ideas from the laboratory, from the drawing room to the factory floor. And this is something I've personally experienced. Uh, uh, long before our Secretary of Energy, long before as uh, Director of a National Laboratory, um, I actually was an advisor to many startup companies. Uh, four startup companies emerged out of my group. There's about a dozen patents. And I was also the advisor to an incubator company, an advisor to um, an, uh, 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 an investment firm. Um, and what I realized during that time was it's just not a bright idea. It's also how do you prepare a business plan? Actually, how do you uh, keep track of the expenses and really grow to be competitive? And uh, we're going to take this uh, to support the effort of getting something out of a laboratory and onto a factory floor. I'm pleased to announce today that the Department of Energy in partnership with the Small Business Administration, is launching a mentorship program to support America's clean energy innovators. The Entrepreneurial Mentor Corps is a pilot program that will connect clean energy startups with private business accelerators. And in turn, these accelerators will recruit mentors who can provide advice and assistance. The pilot program will start with services to 
advise 100 people from at least 200 mentors. And the goal of this initiative is to help a clean energy startup develop the business side of its operation at the same time it develops its technology. The program is open to entrepreneurs and small businesses that have received funding from the Department of Energy through its Recovery Act. As President Obama said last week, one of the measures of our nation's success is, quote, the prospects of a small business owner who dreams of turning a good idea into a thriving enterprise. And through this program, we're going to make those prospects brighter. I, I think we can win the clean energy race and jobs of the future. And I've traveled around the country. I've seen firsthand the ingenuity, the creativity, the energy of America's innovators. These are en engines of job creation and economic growth. And by unleashing this potential, we can compete, we can win in a global market. So thank you. And it's with great pleasure I now introduce uh, our uh, business partner, uh, Karen Mills, the administrator of the Small Business Administration. Karen. Thank you, Secretary Chu, and uh, everyone for being here. America's spirit of entrepreneurship is one of America's greatest assets. And at the SBA, we work tire tirelessly and have for both Main Street entrepreneurs and the high growth entrepreneurs that we're talking about today. You know, we've helped firms like Intel and FedEx when they were just starting out. I don't think we helped AOL, but <laughs> helped a few. And, uh, <laughs> but one of the things that we know from what Austin said is that it's actually a relatively small number of high growth firms that create all of the net new jobs. And these firms come in many forms and across all of the sectors. So that's why today we are calling from, for leaders from all sectors and all industries to come together to ensure that startups have the tools that they need so they can grow and they can create jobs. These startups, as we know, um, are how innovation gets turned into jobs and into fuel for the economy. The president talked about uh, winning the future. And we talk about these startups being uh, the offense. And just to keep uh, you know, the Super Bowl analogies going, we also have uh, taken a look at what we need to keep on winning and help the companies keep on winning. And uh, what we really need is to get more of the investors off the sidelines and into the game. So that is what uh, we are announcing today from the SBA. We are announcing an impact investment fund that we are going to use to drive a billion dollars into the hands of small firms over the next five years. This fund will target having impact in underserved communities and also in emerging industries like clean energy. A second announcement today is that we are announcing a billion dollars for an early stage innovation fund. One of the things that we have heard as we've traveled all around the country is that the valley of death has gotten deeper and wider. And we need to have capital in this market gap in early stage financing between one and five million. Both of these funds are going to be modeled on and uh, built on top of our successful uh, market-based small business investment company or SBIC program. And that operates on a zero subsidy basis. So that's a pretty good bang for the buck for taxpayers. But as uh, Secretary Chu just said, finding capital is just half the battle. And it is equally important to give mentoring and counseling to those companies as they grow. So that's why we have joined um, with the Department of Energy on the Entrepreneurial Mentor Corps that Secretary Chu just mentioned, and we hope that this pilot uh, will expand to many, many more companies. In addition in mentoring, we have a real commitment at the SBA and across the administration to America's veterans. They over-index in starting new businesses, and the Department of Veterans Affairs, who isn't here, but in partnership with us and the Department of Labor, um, is going to be building business incubators that offer specialized counseling for veteran entrepreneurs and places where they can come and grow their business. So we are committed really across the administration as these veterans come home to existing businesses that they want to grow or new businesses that they might want to start, that we have 
more tools for them. But it's not just about giving entrepreneurs the tools. There's another component. It's about removing the barriers that get in the way of entrepreneurs. And you have heard um, in the last weeks, the president announced a government-wide review of the rules and the regulations with a specific focus on those that might stifle our innovators and our small businesses. As part of Startup America, we're going to roll out an initiative to hear directly from entrepreneurs about how we continue to build this more supportive environment and help them turn innovation into jobs. And we're finalizing the details for something we're calling uh, Empowering Entrepreneurs, which are going to be roundtables in eight cities. I, I know that many of us do roundtables in many other cities, so we're going to be gathering and listening to <coughs> entrepreneurs so we can understand what are those barriers and how can we remove them. We're going to announce all of those cities and dates soon, and we're also going to have an online component so entrepreneurs can submit their ideas that way as well. We are, as you can tell, um, across this administration, working together to make sure that Startup America's initiatives touch all facets of entrepreneurs that are out there, that they're going to allow government to help entrepreneurs do what they do best, which is drive innovation, increase U.S. competitiveness, and create jobs. Thank you. And I'm very pleased. As you all know, it's all about leadership. So I'm very, very pleased to announce our private sector leader for this effort and our partner, Steve Case. Thank you, thank you Karen, also Stephen and Gary and, and Jean and Austin. Uh, thank you for your service to our country and thank you also for making it a priority today to really shine a spotlight on entrepreneurs and, and celebrate their activities. And as Gene mentioned, I was also grateful the President spent some time this morning. He's got a lot on his plate, including Egypt, but he recognized this is an important initiative and there's a little bit of a mom and apple pie and entrepreneurship aspect to this. So we are, we're all in this together trying to make sure we, we understand the importance of entrepreneurial activity and really celebrate and accelerate it. If you look back in history, go back even 300 years, it really demonstrates that the story of America really is a story of entrepreneurship. Even William Bradford, when he got on the Mayflower almost 300 years ago, to sail across the ocean. He had an idea, the idea of a, of a new nation, and in many ways was the first entrepreneur. And that's carried forward over the decades. Uh, we've had great entrepreneurs, even uh, people like uh, Thomas Edison and, and Henry Ford, more recently people like Steve Jobs that really have created innovative products and services that have really led the, this country and led the world in terms of product innovation across a whole series of sectors and created millions of jobs. And so we recognize that really is the core underpinning of what makes this nation great and will continue to be as we look to make sure we preserve our, our competitiveness in an increasingly competitive uh, global world. And also as we look at ways to create jobs in this, in this country, which obviously is a priority. And that's what Startup America is all about. We want to really celebrate the work of entrepreneurs, shine a spotlight on them, look for ways to educate people about entrepreneurship and how mentor entrepreneurs with other entrepreneurs so they can take their ideas forward. We want to look at ways to accelerate the best programs that already exist in some local area or regional area, and you'll hear about some of those, and try to take those to scale. So it's all about celebrating and educating and, and trying to accelerate the activities of entrepreneurship. And it is a startup. We're just starting this morning. But if you have ideas, we'd welcome them. You can go to startuppartnership.org or you could tweet us uh, your suggestion with the hashtag Startup America. We really welcome your, your suggestions. And we also appreciate the fact so many entrepreneurs uh, took the time to be here the, uh, this morning. This, this initiative, I think, is important. I'm, I'm delighted and honored, really, to, to, to chair it. But it wouldn't be possible without the, the leadership of the Kauffman Foundation. You've heard this uh, from several of the speakers, and I'll hear from, from Carl. They really have led the way in, in, in researching uh, innovation and entrepreneurship and giving us a kind of a roadmap going forward of where some of the real leverage points are. So I'm delighted that Carl will be uh, joining me in making this effort possible, and I appreciate the efforts over the recent uh, weeks of the people at the Case Foundation and the Kauffman Foundation really to put this in place. But uh, let me turn it over to Carl, and he'll, he'll talk about some of the things that Kauffman's learned and why this is such an important initiative. Uh, thank you, Steve. And I would join Steve in thanking uh, uh, Ellen and um, 
Gene, uh, our two secretaries, and Administrator Mills, uh, for your great service to the nation and for your railing around this issue. Nobody could appreciate here today that this isn't a very special day for the Kauffman Foundation. And if I could take you back to why it's special, uh, Ewing Kauffman, uh, an American from Kansas City, who after having served his nation as a sailor in World War II, not having completed college, came back to start a business which became Marion Laboratories. Mr. Kaufman was born a very, very poor uh, individual on a farm an hour's drive from Kansas City. He died a billionaire. His great gift to America was a simple vision that if he could do it, a common man as he described himself, anybody could do it, and America needed lots more entrepreneurs. In his phrase, every time we help someone start a business, we strengthen the nation's economy. Now this fellow who had never been to college, I think, is one of America's greatest economists because he points again and again to something that economics doesn't understand, and that is the great moment in economics is when a business is started. There is no economy without firms, and when we go into a recession, we speak about it like it's some organism. The fact is, recessions are nothing more or less than firms shrinking. And economic expansions are nothing more or less than firms expanding. The firm is central, and Mr. Kaufman saw that, but he saw a great deal more into it. And it was wonderful, Gene, to hear you use the word dignity, because Mr. Kaufman saw the creation of firms as the way out for poor people to earn dignity and to strengthen the American economy at the same time. But as we know, and today really puts the focus on it, entrepreneurs do something really special when they strengthen the economy. They create the new jobs. And it's nice to know that there's a leftover Kaufman statistic that nobody cited. Um, <laughs> and that is that all new net job creation in the United States is in firms less than five years old. If we're going to create an economy that will grow jobs, we have to create an economy that will grow little companies and that will become big companies, um, as, as has been pointed out. America needs high growth companies, but high growth companies only come once a company has started. This is also a very special day for us because many people in this room come from organizations that over the years we've either helped to start, like Nifty, we've helped Nifty along. There are many people in the room who have been our beneficiaries as they've thought about this very important problem with us. Uh, Professor Goldsby was one of our grantees, and he typifies the level of extraordinary economists who we've brought into this very important work of thinking through this in important ingredient of economics. And we look into the future, helping small, brand new organizations like maybe Kairos and the grants we contemplate for our community colleges as we start on a new project that we call democratizing entrepreneurship. All too often we think of entrepreneurship as the purview in the, in the precincts of very fancy universities with engineers and bright young children doing the Mozart thing with entrepreneuring. The reality is our 500 fastest growing businesses in the United States are started by people when they're 40 years old. And this is very important to understand that entrepreneurship is approachable by anybody. It's a fantastic thing today that uh, President Obama has put together this group. Um, it is really a fantastic thing that Steve would chair this. Uh, it's really a fantastic thing that the C Case Foundation, um, joining Kaufman, are putting the first dollars into starting this. And it's really a fantastic thing that there are other people who've already committed to support this Startup America enterprise, including Intel, Hewlett Packard, IBM, and Facebook. So all their foundations are very important to this. And we're delighted that all these folks would come together under the stewardship and watchful eye um, of our public servants over here, particularly in the Council of Economic Advisors. This is really good news that the Council sees the importance of entrepreneurship and startups. I'll end by one more Kaufman statistic. 40% of our GDP this year comes from firms that did not exist in 1980. This really is the DNA of America and if America is going to be stronger with lots more jobs, this part of our DNA has to be cultured. Thank you.
Thank you, Carl. And now we move into the fun part, which is the entrepreneurs who are, uh, in many ways, American heroes, creating great uh, innovative companies and products and services that do create jobs and do create leadership around the world. Uh, before I introduce the first one, I do also want to thank uh, Tom Khalil in the Office of Science and Technology Policy that's been working hard on this initiative, <laughs> and, and many others in the, in the room. And I was, I was comforted when Gene said that they started working together over 20 years ago, so they're kind of bonded at the hip to make sure that we get the you know, full support of the White House. Uh, so now we get to the fun part. As I said, we've got some entrepreneurs up here and some others in, in, in the room, and they really are the people that make things happen. Uh, you know, Ping Fu will be our first uh, speaker. She can see firsthand what the, you know, the important role government can play in catalyzing something. Certainly the early days of the internet were really made possible by the government investments in the ARPANET, and also was personally involved in the development of the Mo Mosaic browser, which as many of you know, really was one of the key kind of linchpins of the growth of the internet in the, in the 19, uh, 1990s with Mark Andreessen and others who, who worked with her. Uh, so we're delighted she's now shifted from the R&D kind of university uh, government side of things to be a, an entrepreneur with, with Geomagic. And let me turn it over to you, Ping. Thank you, Steve. I was the one paid Mark Andreessen $6.95 that he complained. Um, <laughs> I started Geomagic with a few mathematicians uh, of University of Illinois in the middle of the cornfield. And it's been 10 years now. And looking back, um, the path of going from academia to successful commercialization, there are three factors that contributed to that uh, success path. The first is relentless and even stubborn pursuit of excellence and innovation. Uh, we believe in living on the edge, and we believe that if we don't live on the edge, then we take up way too much space. So we never, you know, we never stopped working with universities and the best talent around the world. The second is that we are a recipient of both public and private uh, fundings. In 2001, we, at the blink of bankruptcy, if it wasn't because uh, funding like SBIR from NSF and the NIST ATP grant, we would not have been here today. Um, with that public funding, we were able to take the company to fast growth and profitability. We were able to attract private funding. We are a VC-backed company, and that funding allowed us to uh, achieve consistent high growth and profitability even in the very difficult economic condition. Two years ago, when the market crashed, um, we made a bold strategic move. Instead of cutting jobs here and hiring lower cost people overseas, we closed China, Hungary, Germany, developed centers, and moved all of our R&D back to the United States because the talents are available and we want to hire the people in our own country. We also increased our investment in global sales. As a result, even in the most difficult economic condition. Our sales consistently grow high double digit. Um, end of 2010, our profit grew 160%. We're hiring 20% more employees every year. And this year, even the first half year, we're gonna hire almost 20% more employees. We don't have space anymore. We need to move into larger buildings. Good problem to have. Um, Last year, I joined uh, the National Council, Advisory Council of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, two subjects that's very dear to my heart. I'm very honored to represent small and medium-sized, high-growth, high-impact companies, as well as women-led companies. Um, I want to thank Department of Commerce and the White House Office of Innovation and Technology for listening to us and for creating the very first platform for entrepreneurs to have a voice for policy making. Um, so for all of the entrepreneurs you out there and then looking for commercialization, there are some uh, great announcements that we made by Dishbander Foundations, the Jumpstart Americans, and also um, NCIA, so don't miss those 
uh, exciting announcement that will come out today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ping. And next up is uh, Brad Feld. Uh, as several people have mentioned, uh, it's, you know, an entrepreneurial company starts with an idea and a passionate entrepreneur willing to pursue that idea and needs some startup capital to get going. But it also needs more than that. It needs an ecosystem that really is supportive to mentor them and plug them into a, a network so they really can take their idea and build it. And Brad's been a real leader uh, in trying to do this in a, in a variety of different uh, cities. And I'll talk about that program and how we can take this notion of incubators and accelerators and really bring that idea to scale. Uh, Brad? Thanks, Steve. So in addition to uh, co-founding Techstars with David Cohen, I'm also a venture capitalist uh, with a firm in Boulder, Colorado called Foundry Group. And we invest all around the U.S. So the last uh, 15 years of my life, I've been investing, uh, helping start companies and working with high-growth tech entrepreneurs uh, throughout the country, kind of akin to uh, our friend Kane uh, from Kung Fu, if anybody remembers that, sort of wandering the earth. I've been wandering the U.S. And uh, in 2006, when, when David and I co-founded Techstars in Boulder, uh, our goal was very simple, which was to create something very tangible for the entrepreneurial community to rally around. And our view was that we needed to create something, there was an opportunity to create something that engaged the entrepreneurs up and down the chain from first-time entrepreneurs to people that were in existing companies to people that had had uh, a couple of companies and some successes and some failures angel investors, venture capital investors, all the service providers around the entrepreneurial community, um, and then entrepreneurs who had retired and were figuring out what to do next. Um, Techstars in Boulder became a mentor-driven organization uh, with the goal of integrating all of those different people in the, diff in the entrepreneurial chain. And one of the things that have com has come out of that, as David and I have spent time thinking about that, and my partners at Foundry Group and I have spent time thinking about it, is a belief that there are hundreds of cities in the United States where significant entrepreneurial activity can occur. And rather than focus just on very specific areas in the US that are very visible in terms of entrepreneurship, one of the things that we can do is really focus on enabling entrepreneurship throughout the country um, in cities big and small. Boulder's only 100,000 people. And today, four or five years later, it's always had an entrepreneurial community. I think probably 10 years ago, people thought of Boulder as a nice place where a bunch of hippies ran out of gas on their way to California. <laughs> and today, you know, it's a thriving leader in the tech entrepreneurial ecosystem. There are three things that every city needs to be able to have a sustainable entrepreneurial community. One is it needs a clear set of leaders in that entrepreneurial community who are entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs have to be the ones that are driving it in their local communities. The second is they need a long-term view. 20 years is a decent amount of time to think about it. And when I talk about 20 years, I mean 20 years from today, not 20 years from sometime in the past. One of the big challenges, I think, with entrepreneurial communities is they have four or five years of, of growth and excitement and activity, and then something happens. Uh, macro, global, economic, downturn, something or other, a uh, couple of entrepreneurs who have been leaders move to Hawaii. Um, people yeah, get easy, easy. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> warmer there. Cheap shot, but you're back here plenty. Um, and fundamentally, the entrepreneurs that are the leaders in the community have to do, and, and hat tip to Steve, have to do what Steve is doing now, which is continue to lead the entrepreneurs even after they've been successful. Um, the last is that there need to be things that engage that entire entrepreneurial community from top to bottom um, of any age. And I think Carl said that really well. This is not just young people, and it's not just middle-aged people, and it's not just old people. It's anyone. And it's this notion that one of the great assets of America is this entrepreneurial drive and innovative drive. And all of the entrepreneurs should be helping each other and anybody that wants to be an entrepreneur engage in that. With that, I'm really proud to announce that uh, Techstars, which was a humble organization started by David Cohen and I in Boulder in 2006, that's now in four cities, uh, Boston, Boulder, Seattle, and New York, uh, is announcing as part of Startup America the Techstars Network, and we're announcing that 16 other programs that are accelerators modeled after Techstars have joined the Techstars Network, so there's 20 locations now that are part of this network, and our goal is part of the overall Startup America partnership is that within three years to have 5,000 mentors uh, mentoring 6,000 entrepreneurs 
that create 25,000 new jobs. Just to give you a sense of the power of this dynamic and engagement between mentors and entrepreneurship, um, we'd like to exceed those numbers quite significantly. That's nice, but let's hear some real entrepreneurial stories. Before we do that, I want to acknowledge a couple of other programs that are part of this public-private partnership that are critically important. Um, and just to give you a sense that it's not a zero-sum game, many of these overlap nicely with things like the Techstars networks and other things that you've heard about today. The ones I'll call out specifically is Mass Challenge, uh, which is a million-dollar startup competition uh, based in Massachusetts, which Steve gave the keynote at recently. Very well received, extremely exciting first year. Um, Ostia, which is a community that's focused on expanding opportunities for women-led entrepreneurs. Um, the Blackstone Foundation is scaling up uh, its Launchpad Entrepreneurship Centers throughout the country. Um, Mark Echo, who is an entrepreneur and leader in the fashion and media industry, is launching an artist and instigators practicum. Um, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is working with uh, the National Chamber Foundation to invest more in K-12 through education around entrepreneurship. So lots of different places where people are saying, let's rally behind Startup America and really get some entrepreneurial activity going. Now, anybody out there that's an entrepreneur knows that when you get in, in an elevator with a venture capitalist, you have less than 30 seconds to talk about what you're doing. And with that, I'd like to toss the ball to a longtime friend of mine, Shervin Pishavar, uh, for our first uh, quick pitch. Well, it's an honor being here. I met Brad uh, when I was uh, about 22 out of Berkeley, and he had a long ponytail at the time. So it's <laughs> I think you can... So Brad has been a huge supporter of entrepreneurs from the very beginning. I um, am the child of immigrants. I myself was an immigrant, and my uh, parents uh, came here with nothing. Uh, grew up not too far from here in Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, my dad drove a taxi cab here in D.C., and my mom cleaned uh, hotel rooms uh, to, to start, start up our lives here in America. Um, and uh, it was the key moment for me was my father working night and day uh, because I had asked him for an Apple IIc uh, computer uh, when I was in a magnet program in seventh grade, and, and he did that. And I woke up one day with, a, with an Apple IIc and learned how to, how to code initially, and uh, that changed my life. Um, and out of Berkeley, I, I decided to uh, start up my first company called Web, WebOS. It was the first web operating system. That's how I met Brad and uh, received the support of great entrepreneurs. Um, I'll tell a quick story I, uh, on the 30-second pitch idea. My, I read a story about a guy named Jamie Dimon, who I'm sure many of you know. Uh, in Fortune magazine uh, back then, and it said that uh, he had a, you know, left city, and, and to me, as a 21-year-old entrepreneur, I said, I'm just going to call him. Uh, I cold called Jamie Dimon, and uh, I called 411 in, in New York, and, uh, and someone picked up the phone. I was expecting a secretary or someone, to, the, the, an assistant, and uh, I said, you know, is Jamie Dimon there? And he said, this is him. I realized, oh my God, <laughs> I have 30, 30 seconds to, 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 to pitch him. And he invited me to New York. Somehow I mustered up the courage to say the right things. And, and here I am today. I've started now four companies. And I'm blessed to be able to now invest in 30 different startups myself personally, starting to give back and working with great people here like uh, Stephen Coltai on spreading entrepreneurship globally and working with Anish uh, on the trip to Russia with global entrepreneurs. Um, and it's amazing being here. Uh, Startup America is going to change not just America but the world by, by showing uh, the potential of people like Zoe. Um, my own daughter is 10 years old and has her own company called iPillow. So uh, <laughs> I need to get you on the board of uh, Daria's little company. <laughs> well, thank you so much. In, in the State of the Union address, uh, President Obama uh, said very clearly that entrepreneurs do big things and, and go after big ideas. And I think it was very exciting to all the entrepreneurs listening um, that this administration is really focusing uh, a bright light on entrepreneurship uh, as uh, a key to where we're going as a country and an economy. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Jennifer Zizit. Jennifer, where are you? Right here. Hello. I'm Jennifer Zezet. I'm the founder of a company called uh, Scout Labs um, out of San Francisco.
Francisco, California. Um, Scout Labs is basically a way to index social media and we analyze it for companies, brands, governments who might want to listen um, to what it is that consumers are saying out across the internet in real time, right here, right now, and globally. Um, so I am an entrepreneur through and through, um, as a few of us are here. Um, we, we're, we're, we're kind of bizarre, we're kind of crazy. Um, it's, it, we're a strange breed, we definitely live and breathe and work kind of around the clock. Um, when we can't work anymore, we often sleep on the floor. Have you slept on the floor? <laughs> yes, we've slept on the floor. And usually even while we're dreaming, we're dreaming about our startups. Um, we clearly don't do this for money. Most of us make nothing or little or next to nothing. Um, so what makes us go? And I think about this a lot. Um, Think of us as sled dogs. We are just like chomping at the bit. We are born to run and chase new ideas. And it's not totally logical, for sure. Um, we don't wait for people to create jobs for us. We are job creators. Um, Scout started with one person. We scaled it to, I sc we scaled the company to 25. We were acquired by another slightly bigger startup. Um, and now Lithium Technologies, the combined group, has 160 employees and we're going very, very rapidly. I'm happy to report. Um, but more than just the number of jobs, and probably more importantly than the number of jobs that we create, is the kind of jobs that we create and the kind of work that we do. The work that we do is passionate work. Um, we love what we do, and I am so happy to be raising kids who get to see their mommy who loves going to work every single day because she loves what she does. And the jobs that we create and the work that we create is very productive work. I know that we want to increase the productivity of America. You should come and walk the halls of any one of our companies on a daily basis. We wear 10 hats, we work around the clock. It is a astonishing to see the kinds of what we actually do on a daily basis. And we do very connected, we create really connected work. Um, when you start a startup, you basically forge a new family. And there are bonds that will last often a lifetime. And we are connected to our idea, and we are connected to each other. And that is the kind of work that this country, I think, really needs. So we are entrepreneurs. We are sled dogs. Like, fund us, support us, connect us. Um, let us, let us run. We will help pull America forward. Thank you. Next up is Kimberly Brown. Hello, my name is Kimberly Brown, and I'm CEO of Amethyst Technologies, a biotech company located in Baltimore, Maryland. We are a former incubator company. In 2007, I purchased the contract rights to a government contract from a small business that I worked for for eight years. We started with one employee and one client. We invested in training, we invested in people to fuel growth. Today we have 23 employees. We support 15 U.S. Army divisions, the malaria program, HIV program, and emerging infectious disease <coughs> programs. We are integrating innovation with FDA compliance. We've created green jobs, green labs, and now we have a nonprofit affiliate focused on global health delivery, STEM education, and economic empowerment in low-income communities. Thank you. Brett Skoda is next. Brent. Entrepreneurs create jobs. Hi, I'm Brent Skoda. In 2010, I won the Global Student Entrepreneur Award and graduated from Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, Texas. GSEA is a program that teaches college student entrepreneurs to grow their businesses and create jobs. In 2009, I had two businesses and 12 employees. In 2011, will grow to three businesses and 36 employees. The Entrepreneurs Organization, with the support of the Kauffman Foundation, fosters relationships between entrepreneurs and mentors the job creators to expand their businesses to help our global economy. It makes sense for people to learn from each other. Access to resources is always a challenge. I spent two years in 200 no's before accessing the investment necessary to launch my business. Connecting entrepreneurs with resources increases jobs. Today, I'm excited to announce my next startup, Yummy.com. 
Yummy has built the world's largest database of restaurant menu nutrition and provides consumers with instant access to nutritional information so they can find the healthiest foods. Access to information gives us all a choice. These choices make us healthier as individuals and improve our economy. <laughs> as we begin our second month in 2011, we have an opportunity to invest in Americans who convert ideas into jobs. Let's do what we do best, write our own destiny. Thanks so much. I'd like to wrap up by uh, thanking everybody for coming today and participating in the launch of this new startup, uh, Startup America. I'd especially like to thank uh, Steve Case and Carl Schramm and their respective organizations for providing leadership for this. I think things like this are um, uh, critically important to do, and uh, the folks that take that leadership effort uh, uh, are really appreciated. Um, we're going to have a closed uh, brainstorming session for everybody except the media um, uh, after a short break, probably a five or ten minute break. Um, we'll be back in here. Uh, so go ahead and, and network. And for folks in the press, uh, thank you for coming. And again, for everybody, please uh, thank everybody in the administration for all their support and effort and activity around this. <laughs>